We're going to be reading some few scriptures. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 18 and Revelation chapter 12 verse 10 to 11. You're welcome to World Creation Service. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 18. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10 to 11. Nehemiah 4 18 says, Every one of the builder had his sword guided by his side and he, as he built, the one who sounded the trumpet was beside him. This was when they were building, rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. The Bible says one of the, every one of the builders had what? What are they doing? How can you be building and be carrying sword? What are you doing with sword? The Bible says they carry sword guided at their side as they build, as they build, as they build. So you don't carry sword only to the war front. You carry, you carry sword to the walk front. These were builders. They are supposed to carry the only thing they will use in building. But the Bible says they also carry sword by their side. The reason was when they were rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem, there is this man called Tobiat. His name is Tobiat. He has other friends, Sambala, Tobiat. They gathered themselves together and they were trying to stop the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem. Praise God. And so because these people knew that they were not just going to walk, that there is also war at work, they carry some sword, they carry sword beside them. God puts in my heart to share with you this morning that you need to start taking some things very seriously in your place of assignment. Many of us, we harm ourselves with all the certifications, but we don't harm ourselves with a sword. I must say a sword. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. There, are, there is war in your workplace. Whether you identify it, whether you accept it, whether you disagree, whether it's just, it's just like I told, I, you said, what's my name? I said, my name is David Adioye. You said, you don't believe it. Does that change my name? So there is war. I don't believe. That doesn't change the war. The war is there. There is war at work. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Some of those wars are not just physical war. Some of them are spiritual war. That wants to stop your advancement. That is not happy that you are breaking new grounds. That is not happy that you are taking new territories. That is not happy that you are making advancement to the glory of God. And this war is designed to stop you. You have to stop the war before the war stops you. Am I correct? So they carry the sword by their sides as they build. The Bible says as they build. They didn't put the sword on one side and go and build. The sword was beside them while they were building. That's to tell you that this is a very important. They know that Sambalat can mobilize his men and they can. Then there was also a trumpeter beside them that was watching. It always says watch and pray. That was watchful for them. So while they were busy building, the trumpeter was watching. If case he sights enemy coming, you blow the trumpet so they can stop the work and get ready for war. If you're not ready for war at work, if it takes you by, by, by surprise, then it, one can become a victim. You'll not be a victim. The work going on at your work will end in your victory. You will win at work. In every area where you have battles, in your place of work, in your place where your source is, God will fight for you. God will give you victory. So every business and career person must start understanding that they need to be harmed. Everybody say, I need to be harmed. Say it confidently, I need to be harmed. I tie to my message, be harmed for victory at work. Be harmed for victory at work. Be, don't just assume that victory will come to you at work because you are a child of God. You have to be harmed for victory at work. And please, don't, be, don't harm yourself just to be defensive. 
arm yourself also to be offensive. The sword they carry. What is the difference between sword and cutlass? Cutlass has one edge. Abby? Sword has how many edge? Two. Abby? Cutlass, you can only use one side of cutlass to cut. The other side is blood. But sword, both sides are what? Are sharp. The meaning of that is that it is both for defense and offense at the same time. So, be harmed for both, be harmed to be defensive, be harmed to be offensive. Don't say, everything is running well in my workplace. This morning, I will not pray. I will, I will, I will, I will, uh, I will, I will do it tomorrow. No. Every day is important. Be offensive. Don't be reactive, be proactive. Be ready. You know, the Bible says in the place, it said, when men slap you on the right cheek, it said, turn the left cheek. God, you see, that place is saying, if you are stupid enough to allow them to slap you on the right cheek, let them complete the process. There are Christians that you cannot even slap at all. They, they, you are bringing it because they are ready. So there is no need to be turning on that side because the first one, you can't do it. So be offensive. Be prepared. Be harmed. Be ready. Hallelujah. Don't be careless. There are some of us hearing this message on site online that it's about time you don't collect things and put in your mouth from everybody. Don't say, the Lord say, when we eat deadly things, it will not hurt us. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. There are some of you that are walking in places that before you sit, you lay your hands on the seat. Because you don't know what happened over the night. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You be sensitive. Be ready. That why the slap, first slap is coming. Because you are ready. That's why the Bible says, watch and... The Christian of nowadays are only praying. They are not watching. Watch and pray. Somebody somewhere is envious of you. Somebody somewhere is seeing that you're making too much progress than she's making or he is making. Somebody is getting hungry. And some, and some of those somebody are not believers who can easily overcome their jealousy. Some are unbelievers who visit places. There's this very top person in one of the banks in Nigeria many years ago that we used to, uh, she used to come around and we used to pray. She's a top, when I say top, I mean very top in one of the biggest bank in this country. She shared a story with me I will never forget. She works in the headquarter office with so many young people and they handle a lot of big things. One day, a particular money got missing and she said in their department, because of the sensitivity of what they do, the moment they called the EFCC or called those who are going to investigate, the first thing they did was to collect everybody's phone, including her phone. That was the first thing they did. They interviewed her, they asked her questions. Who do you think can do this? She said, you know, she mentioned those who look like they can do it. There's this guy she did not even mention because this guy is very close to her. He's like a younger brother to her. This guy is very kind, very nice, very easy going. This guy doesn't you know, he said, he did not even mention this guy's name. He said, in fact, he, she shares personal things with this guy sometimes. The guy is like a brother to him, to her. But it was surprising that while the people, the investigators collected the phone, they were looking for the money. They found something else. They found some of the SMS he was sending to Abalist and sending her name. And the things they were asking her to do, you know, back and forth WhatsApp messages between him and his abalist. And when they read that place, they said, well, even though this is not what we're looking for, we need to let this woman know. Because there's a way this woman talked about him that she needs to know. So they called her and showed her. She said she was crying. Now, what, did she, what did I do? I was nice. I was kind. I've never written anything, never given him query. What did I do? Why did I get to this guy's blacklist? You can't tell why you're on the blacklist of people. Every time you find yourself on the blacklist of people, it's not because you are bad. 
Sometimes it's because you're good and they're jealous. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 